This screencast accompanies my lecture covering the central supermassive black hole that resides at the center of the Milky Way galaxy. To begin, here's a very beautiful visible light photograph of the band of the Milky Way stretching across the sky. This is typically what you would see high in the sky in the summer months. Okay, right here in the foreground are the bright stars of the constellation of Sagittarius, and then the direction towards the galactic center is roughly in this direction here. Our view of the galactic center using visible light is actually obscured by the Sagittarius arm of the galaxy. That's the next spiral arm over from us towards the galactic center. That's all of this intervening material here that you see in this visible light photograph. However, this material is transparent to other forms of light, primarily radio waves, X-rays, and infrared. So when we examine the galactic center by using powerful telescopes, we use those forms of light instead. Okay, now a very small portion of this visible light photograph here is being depicted in the next slide in terms of radio waves. There is a very bright source of radio wave emission coming from the galactic center. This bright source of radio wave emission is referred to as Sagittarius A. If you had a very powerful radio receiver and you pointed it in the direction of the constellation of Sagittarius, you would hear all of this static coming from this region here. Okay, now in addition to a huge amount of radio waves coming from the central portion of the galactic center, there is also a huge amount of X-rays coming from that direction as well. That's depicted here in this slide. The brightest X-ray source in this slide is right here. This is the location of the supermassive black hole, and this X-ray source is referred to as Sagittarius A star. That is the somewhat formal name of the black hole itself. X-rays are only produced by very highly energetic processes, so there's a huge amount of energy that is pouring out of a relatively small area here down at the galactic center where the black hole is located. Okay, this right here is not a visible light photograph. It's instead an infrared light photograph of the central light year or so surrounding Sagittarius A star, which is right here in the crosshair. To give you an idea as to how crowded this region is, there are several thousand stars depicted here in this photograph. Compare this region here to the region, for example, surrounding the Sun. The closest star system to the Sun is over 4.3 light years away. That's the triple star system of Alpha Centauri. Notice how crowded together here, however, the stars are down at the galactic center, whereas here on the outskirts of the galaxy, it is essentially a very quiet area. Here's a nice analogy that you can use to describe this. Think of the Milky Way galaxy as a city, and then right here near the galactic center is looking at all this bustling activity of, say, downtown. And then the sun basically resides on the outskirts of the suburbs, roughly two-thirds of the way out from the galactic center, covering the entire galaxy itself. Okay, now there are a couple of different populations of stars that were depicted in the previous photograph that it's outlined here on this map. First of all, in a spherical halo extending out about five light years away or so from the black hole is a spherical halo of old red stars. This is typical of what we see, for example, in the galactic bulges of normal spiral galaxies. But then somewhat mysteriously, there is a disk right here a couple of light years wide and a small cluster of stars here in the central light year or so surrounding the black hole of relatively young massive stars. We're not quite sure where these stars came from. However, it's been hypothesized that a few million years ago, a very large cloud of dust and gas passed really close to the black hole. That dust and gas got compressed by the enormous gravity that is present there, resulting in a huge amount of star formation. And then the star formation that has been left over essentially consists of these young stars forming this disk and this cluster here really close to the black hole. We think that all this happened several million years ago. Okay, this slide here depicts the motions of the stars within that disk and within the cluster referred to as the S cluster really close to the black hole itself. And then within the S cluster here, each one of the stars that you see here and here and also here are tracing out elliptical orbits around the black hole. The focus of each one of these ellipses, for example, is the same. That is Sagittarius A star. No visible light is coming from this focus. However, this is where all of the X-rays are coming from. 
So this is primarily why we know that the black hole is there. Basically, it's enormous gravitational influence that it exerts upon stars in the S cluster that are very close to the black hole itself and are all orbiting around the black hole where each individual ellipse has the same focus here. Once again, that's the location of Sagittarius A star. What astronomers have done over the course of decades is they've studied the motions of the stars within the S cluster as they orbit around the black hole. This is right here, one of the most heavily studied stars within the S cluster. What you're looking at here is data covering about 10 years or so from here to here as this star orbs the black hole. It takes this star roughly 15 years or so to make one complete orbit. To give you an idea of the size of this ellipse, the distance, for example, from the focus where the black hole is located to the perihelion position of this star is over three times the distance that Pluto is from the sun. Yet, it takes this star only about 15 years or so to go around the black hole, whereas it takes Pluto, for example, 250 years or so to go around the sun. So what does that tell you about the amount of gravity that is present here? It's absolutely huge. So the mass of this point right here, once again, this point is not emitting any visible light, but we do see x-rays coming from it. The mass of this point has to be in the neighborhood of three and a half million times the mass of the sun itself to basically cause this gravitational influence upon this star and all of the others in the S cluster. So the primary evidence that we have that the central supermassive black hole of the Milky Way is there is because of its gravitational influence on all of the stars that are closest to it. Okay, that concludes this screencast.